what do you think one of those outcomes what do you think they were they were hoping for that they were looking for in 1954 when the decision came down well to me it's real simple i mean when you have to ship people all over town to come to one school and to make sure that you know they don't spread out anywhere else that's just wrong mm -hmm. it's just it's, it's just wrong yeah so uh they were wanting to be able to live in their neighborhoods right. go to school in their neighborhoods go this the neighborhood and get you know blend in with everybody in the neighborhood it's kind of funny that, you know, two kids can play in the street together, but then one of them's heading across town to go to school. Mm -hmm. It's just not right. Mm -hmm. And it was time to do something about it. Where do you think we are today, right now, in 2019? I think the kids of today don't want to really believe that ever happened. Mm -hmm. I don't think they want to believe that there was ever anything called segregation. I remember <laughs> I had a young family member of mine that uh, we sat him down and we showed him Roots mm -hmm. when, the, when Roots was first being on TV. And he was about 13 years old at the time. And they took a commercial break and he was twitching and flipping around the chair. And my sister says, what is wrong with you? He says, I don't want to watch this. He said, why don't you want to watch it? He said, because they couldn't have done that. It was against the law. Now this was in 1981. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, he couldn't even fathom that people could do the things that had been done in this country. Okay, so we've come a long way since then, and I don't think these new kids would want to even look back at that because it doesn't make any sense. It's just wrong right. to do that to any group of people or any groups of people or any one group having it all and nobody having anything else. Now, have we achieved that goal of 1954? Educationally, I believe we have. Okay. I think anything else now is classism. Mm -hmm. It's about the money. You always follow the money, you'll find the crime. Okay. <laughs> it's about classism now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's folks who have done well, and I don't care what color they are, they've done well. But if you follow the way things are now with the percentage of the income, okay, more things are classism than racism, okay? But if you talk to some of my friends who are from the Deep South, they may tell a little different, different story, mm -hmm. okay? That you go back home, things haven't changed everywhere. Everything has not changed, okay? But Topeka, Kansas is a little bit different animal when it comes to racism. Okay, I kind of call it more cameo. Cameo, you know, explain. A little more term. cameo. You can, yeah. you can try to hide some things. You know, you can work paperwork. You, you can not allow you know things to be seen. Um, there wasn't a whole bunch of battling and uh, lynching and things of that kind of thing. Ever here, yeah. But it was still racism. Right. Okay. Right. It's it's still the same thing. That's why I believe that. Brown was able to get some things done here that weren't being able to be done down in Selma and, and different places who chose to risk their lives you know, for, for things to happen. Do you think we need a new civil rights movement? I don't believe so. No? Why is that? Can you tell me? I believe we need to have a, a class Mo <laughs> movement. movement. Okay. okay. I believe we ought to move some money around. Mm -hmm. You know, give some people an opportunity to make some money. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you don't have to worry about somebody doing things to you, you can move, <laughs> okay? <laughs> or you don't have to have that person around you very much and they can't control you because we have legal rights. We have enough people who understand those rights that can do things for you or you can do them for yourself. Right. That's just the way I see it. Um, like I said, I had a 30 year career with Maul Bell and I got to see everything. Mm -hmm. I got to go to places that people will never get to go see. I got to work for four different presidents for the White House communications staff. Um, I got to see everything from a, a dirt teepee in Lawrence, Kansas, putting a phone in it, to some of the richest people in the world, and, and I actually touched Air Force One. So I've seen how people are, and I believe that people are people now. Yeah, grandpa and great-grandpa and them had a different understanding of life. We've moved on.
And if that stuff is still prevalent someplace, we need to put that fire out. What would you change to make things better? Love. I mean, the good Lord himself says love is the most powerful thing there is. Mm -hmm. And we learn to love our family. We learn to love our mother and father. We learn to love our siblings. We learn to love our, uh, the people we choose to love. That translates to loving other people. There's no human being any different than any other human being. And whoever came with the concept that thought it would be a good idea you know, to enslave some people and make them work for you, uh, to uh, treat the rest of the world because they're uneducated a certain way. Well, not a good idea, especially not now, because this is a different time. This is a better time, you know, to be able to live in this world, but I believe in God myself, you know, and he won't let me do crazy things and uh, get away with it trying to get to where I'm trying to go. So I think the world needs to love one another more. I think the new kids have a much better understanding of it. I think once they grasp on the government, uh, I think we're gonna be a, a much better country because it's gonna be based on some facts instead of some nonsense.